Good morning. This is the Sandusky Register, Ohio 89th District House District debate between DJ Swearingen and Alexis Miller. We're going to meet the candidates in one moment. But before we, want, we do that, I want to mention that this debate is brought to you by BGSU Firelands College as a public service. And we want to thank BGSU Firelands College for helping us present this program. This is the first in a series of five debates the Register will be bringing to the public at our YouTube channel and at our website. These debates will be available for demand viewing after they're completed. We're going to meet the candidates in one moment, but before we do, I want to mention that producing this segment, this debate, is Aaron Caldwell and our journalists who are participating asking the questions are Brandon Adio and Tom Jackson. I'm Matt Westerhold, editor of the Sandusky Register, and our candidates are DJ Swearingen on my immediate left, and on my right is Alexis Miller. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us, Matt. We appreciate you being here. We're going to mention real quick uh, the debate format, each candidate gets a 60 second introduction. Each candidate receives a, a one minute to answer the questions and each candidate will have 30 seconds to rebut his or her opponent during the debate. At any point later in the debate, the moderator, that would be me, uh, may switch to a rapid fire format, cutting the times in half 30 seconds and 15 seconds for a rebuttal. Each candidate will have a 90 second closing statement. Uh, Brandon, is there anything else I should mention at this point? So we're gonna open the debate with opening statements and I'll leave it and I'll go with you first. Your opening statement. Thanks Matt, again, thanks to the Sandusky Register, all the staff for having us here today. You know, almost 10 years ago now, my wife and I had a very important choice to make. We were graduating graduate school, looking to start our lives and career, and where were we going to live? Where were we going to start? We had several options in the big city suburban life, but we chose the shores of Lake Erie because we think this is truly the best place to live, work, and raise your family. Last year, I also had a decision to make. Was I going to pause my law practice to serve our community in Columbus? And the answer was yes. Since that time, we've worked on bringing jobs to our area. We've worked on providing accessible and affordable health care. We've worked on educating our kids for the jobs of the future. And we've also worked to protect Lake Erie. I'm here today to ask for another two years. Thank you all for your support. Thank you, Representative Schweringen. Alexis Miller, the uh, Democratic nominee, your opening statement. Thanks, uh, Matt, and thank you, BGSU and the staff of the Register for having us today. Um, my name is Alexis Miller. I was born and raised here in Erie County. Um, I'm a graduate of Perkins High School, and after school I went to Ohio State and um, have an undergrad and graduate degree from Ohio State. After my husband and I finished grad school, we decided to move back home uh, to where I'm from. And I was very excited to do that. My family is from here, um, and they still live here, and I'm uh, very glad to be near family again. Um, the things I care about and the reason I'm running is I think uh, the state of Ohio needs to prioritize working people, accessible and affordable health care, and protections in retirement for our seniors so that they um, can earn the benefits they work their whole lives to get. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, candidates, uh, for those opening statements. And we're going to go to our first question, and we'll go to Tom Jackson for that question. Thank you very much, Matt. Earlier this year, lawmakers attempted to limit the state health department's ability to issue public health orders. Did you support this effort, and was it wise to seek changes in the middle of a pandemic? And we'll start with you, Alexis. Um, I think the priority of the state needs to be protecting the health and safety of uh, people in our community. Erie and Ottawa counties are among the oldest people in the state of Ohio, um, and we know that that is the population most at risk for uh, serious complications due to coronavirus. So I think that is the priority. 
and I would not have rolled back um, a medical director's authority in the middle of a pandemic. We still don't have a health director in the state of Ohio, um, and I think that's a major problem. Thank you, and Representative Swearingen. Thanks, Matt. I think we have to consider, as lawmakers, who has the power in our state. And the answer to that question is the people of Ohio. When they go to the polls, the people of Ohio have, a, have an agreement. We are electing these individuals and giving them our power and authority to make decisions on our behalf. So when it comes to making long-term decisions in the best interest of Ohioans, the deal is those decisions go through the legislature with the advice of industry experts, whether that's health experts, whether that's scientific experts, lawmakers listen to those people and they make a decision. So it's important that long-term decisions reside with legislators in the Ohio General Assembly and we work with the governor to make the best decision in the interest of all involved. So did you support the effort? So are we talking about Senate Bill 1? Uh, to, yes, to limit the public, to, to give the state legislature power to limit the ability of the public health director. Yeah, we, in the immediate crisis, it makes sense that the executive branch can step in and put the crisis down. When it comes to long-term decisions, my belief is that the legislature is the duly elected body to make those decisions on behalf of the citizens that it represents. So you still support that position? I it do. should be it, the power should be given to the legislature. Okay. And we're going to go to our next question. Brandon Adio. Thank you, Matt. Do you support the mask mandates, social distancing, and crowd limitations under Ohio's current public health orders? And are you concerned that a portion of our population ignores these mandates? We'll start with you, uh, Representative Swearingen. I think that goes back to the earlier discussion that we had on legislation. You know, we're a country of laws. We are not a country of mandates. So when it comes to an immediate crisis over the short term, it makes sense that the executive branch can step in, uh, help us work through that crisis collectively. If we're to be having decisions that impact over the long term, you know, years at a time, which the governor said this could go on for, those decisions need to be made in collaboration with the legislative body. Very good. Candidate Miller. I support masks, yes, and social distancing. What was the third one? Are you concerned that a portion of our population ignores these mandates? Yes. Um, if everyone wore a mask out of the gate, you know, two weeks after the initial onset of coronavirus in Ohio, um, I think we'd be in a lot better economic and health state in the state of Ohio, um, not to mention the country. You know, 200,000 people have died. Uh, that's no small thing. <laughs> uh, it's more people than died on 9-11, so I, uh, I support masks, yes. And the questions also will be on the screen if you, if you need to, to assistance in recalling the question. And, and are you concerned, Representative Swearingen, that a portion of the population Seem, is seemingly ignoring the mandates. Yeah, I, I'm concerned that people would ignore recommendations from health experts or scientists. I mean, that's always a concern of mine. No one's taking those lightly. Okay, and we'll move on to our next question. And this one from Tom Jackson. Okay, we have another uh, question that's a, both a statewide issue but also a local issue. Uh, do you support re replacement legislation to bail out Ohio's two nuclear energy plants? If so, how do you envision that being accomplished? And if you are opposed, why is that? And obviously we're talking about davis Bessey in uh, Ottawa County is one of the two plants. And we'll start with you, Candidate Miller. Um, I, first of all, I would prioritize the workers at Davis Bussey and want to make sure that um, you know the jobs and that tax base supported by the nuclear facility um, that that question is addressed first in any sort of replacement or talk of it. But I think this is an opportunity to actually create an energy policy for Ohio, which we don't we don't have and haven't had for at least a decade. Um, and I think that includes nuclear power. 
Um, it includes renewable energy sources. It includes refineries. We have two in Toledo. Um, I think Northwest Ohio is really well positioned to create new jobs and new sources of energy for the future. Uh, and I think we'd be remiss not to take a look at that and not to actually develop a good, sound policy for the future. Very good. And Representative Swearingen. We do have a mess of an energy policy right now. And we've actually established a committee in the House right now to take a substantive overview of what we can do moving forward with our energy policy. Nuclear energy will play a vital role in that effort, not just for our local community, but for the state of Ohio as well, because it will keep energy costs low for Ohio families that live paycheck to paycheck in most instances. We need to keep costs low for them in an energy policy that's in the best interest of those individuals, and that includes nuclear. Nuclear provides 90% of our clean energy. It provides, on some days, 35% of our base load power to our energy grid. If you take that away, we're going to have to start importing energy from other states. We become reliant on those states to get our energy, and costs will arise as a result, not to mention the revenue to our first responders, all of the jobs, and our school system. Very good. Thank you for that answer. And we're going to go to Brandon Adio for our next question. Federal prosecutors contend that State Representative Larry Householder and others were bribed in a $60 million scheme to approve the nuclear bailout, also known as House Bill 6. For both of you, what are your concerns about corruption at the State House, and what reforms, in your view, are needed to prevent it? And we'll start with you, Representative Schwerenger, with that question. Thanks, Matt. Larry Householder created a disaster, and he brought shame, quite frankly, on our state, and we need to deal with that. There are several pieces of legislation that have been introduced, namely to disclose the donors behind what's, quote, called dark money. I support that. I think the citizens have a right to know what entities or individuals are contributing to elections or races in their state. And I think focusing on legislation like that going forward is going to be good for Ohio citizens, and I support it. Very good. Thank you. And candidate Miller, same question. Um, I don't disagree that there needs to be better uh, campaign finance disclosure um, laws in the state of Ohio. Dark money has played an awful part in this race um, two years ago and four years ago. So you don't have to look very far to find the effects of uh, this dark money in the state of Ohio. Um, I don't think anything's going to change if we keep electing the same people over and over again to do the same job. And the people who are appointed by this guy who <laughs> committed a $61 million fraud against the state of Ohio, um, I just don't think you can do that by electing the same people over and over again. We need new ideas and we need new people. Very good. And we'll go to our next question from reporter Tom Jackson. Local leaders have pushed to have tourism recognized as an industry in Ohio so it would be eligible for more assistance funding from Jobs Ohio. Do you support this effort, and if you're elected, will you be committed to this change? We'll start with you, candidate Miller. Absolutely. Um, I think for a long time, the economies of, you know, Erie and Ottawa County have um, been supported by and are heavily influenced by tourism. And any way to establish that this isn't um, just some sort of hobby on the you know that people do for fun. This is an actual economic driver for the state of Ohio, and the state should recognize that. And I would absolutely consider uh, legislation to help uh, promote that, to promote good. our area. Thank you, candidate Miller. We'll go to Representative Swearingen. Thanks, Matt. This is actually something that I've already started working on. I've had conversations with Jobs Ohio and tourism companies in our areas have been involved in those conversations. This is a big deal. Erie and Ottawa counties, Job, Jobs Ohio is funded by sales tax from liquor sales. Because of the nature of our two counties, we are actually in the top, top two out of five, uh, we're in the top five out of the whole state of 88 counties, both of our counties. So my argument is we, fund a great deal of Jobs Ohio's uh, policies and investments, that money needs to come back to us in tourism. And I've already taken a stand for that with Jobs Ohio and will continue to do so if re-elected for another two years. 
Very good. Thank you, uh, Representative Swearingen. This is the 89th House District debate. It's being brought to you by BGSU Firelands College, and we want to thank Firelands College for providing this service and assisting us in bringing you these five different debates in the month of October at the Sandusky Register. This is the 89th House District debate. The 89th House District includes Erie and Ottawa counties. This debate and all of our other debates are going to be available for demand viewing at SanduskyRegister.com and also at the Register's YouTube channel after it's completed up, up and through Election Day. We're going to move on to our next question and we're going to take that question from Mr. Adio, Brandon Adio. Critics allege that standard ground laws and other program legislation adopted by states are racist. What, if any, gun reforms do you support and why? And we'll start with Representative Swearingen. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. There are many questions that go into this issue. The one that I'm focused on primarily is what would make somebody unprovoked point a gun at another human being and pull the trigger? And we need to be asking why. Because until we get to the root, these issues are not going to stop, whether that's gun violence or any other type of violence. So we need to continue investing in wraparound services for child development that helps address mental health issues. We did that in this past year's budget. It was a record-setting investment. We also need to continue investing in jobs. Get people off the streets, out of crime, and into jobs. And if you talk to Sheriff Lavorchik or Sheriff Sigsworth, they will tell you the single greatest concentration of mental health and addiction issues is in the jail. So if we start to address mental health and addiction in a more substantive way, that hopefully gets to the root of the problem. Are there any gun reform legislation that you support? Yes, I support my bill that I introduced in the House earlier last year. Okay, and what would it do if it were enacted? It tightens up background checks for criminals. It allows local law enforcement to enforce a broader scale of gun violations. And it also uh, increases the time for expungement for crimes, which that shows up on an individual's record when they go to get a firearm. Very good. And candidate Miller, same question. Um, I support our Constitution, including the Bill of Rights and the Second Amendment. Um, however, I'm concerned about people with violent pasts uh, accessing any kind of lethal weapon, you know, whether it's a gun or a machete or a knife. Um, that's concerning to me and I would uh, be interested in looking at legislation around that. Okay. And we'll go to the next question from reporter Tom Jackson. And uh, here's another familiar issue for you. Addiction has caused thousands of deaths in Ohio. Is the state doing enough to assist recovery? What are the best state programs in your view and what needs to happen to improve recovery services? And we'll start with you, candidate Miller. Um, what the largest payer of mental health and addiction services is Medicaid. So making sure that Medicaid expansion continues in the state of Ohio, um, not just for now, but into the future, is really important in helping people access addiction uh, treatment services. Um, and I think, generally speaking, the priority needs to be, from the state's perspective, of uh, giving resources back to local governments because it is local governments, fundamentally, that provide services um, <clears throat> like mental health and addiction services uh, in our state. So those, I think those two things, it's a funding issue, really. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, Representative Swearingen. Thanks, Matt. We need to continue, as I alluded to earlier, investing in the children of this state so that they don't grow up with serious issues that need to be addressed later on down the road. If we invest in our kids now, provide them a good education, a quality education, hopefully we can avoid issues later on. This is truly a local issue and it's best handled at the local level. You know, I've been working with our commissioners to address issues around here. You know, our commissioners have pointed out the fact that our mental health recovery board has a substantial amount of cash on hand that we can tap into and provide a full continuum of services to our local community. And is that bottlenecked right now? Is that an issue? I, I believe it is an issue. I think we need to do a better job of spending the money that we have on hand. That's why the levies are in place. 
is so that we can utilize those resources to uh, address local issues in mental health and addiction. And, and as a legislature, as a legislator, what role would you have in, in unbottling that, if that makes sense? You know, it, it goes back to the fact of working with our local community, our commissioners, our first responders, to make sure that their needs are met on a local level. But if there is something that needs to be done at the state, then I'm happy to do that as far as legislatively. But, you know, the role of state representative, you're a member of the community. And just because you're not writing a law doesn't mean you don't get involved and help where you can. Very good. Thank you, sir. And I think it's your, your response. Is that right? No, you already responded. Yeah. That. Okay. <laughs> We're going to move on to the next question from uh, reporter Brandon Adio. Thank you, Matt. What are the top three legislative initiatives that would work to protect Lake Erie, in your view, and deal with the harmful algal blooms and other environmental challenges? And we'll give that to you, Representative uh, Swearingen. Thanks, Matt. Back to my earlier comment about working with local community members. You know, Lake Erie Foundation is a great group locally that does a good job to protect the lake. So I'm going to continue working with them. Uh, Mr. Stouffer in particular, Lake Erie Shores and Islands, Larry Fletcher, you know, those are the boots on the ground. And the best ideas come from listening to them. H2 Ohio is a great program. We need to fully fund that program to make sure that we preserve the lake for future generations and also continue to work with our farming community and best practices that decrease algal blooms. All right, thank you for that answer. And candidate Miller. Um, I think the top way to address you know, the environmental challenges and to protect Lake Erie now and into the future would be uh, going back to my energy policy statement, uh, investing in renewable energy resources to make sure that Lake Erie is protected because without um, a healthy Lake Erie, no one will come here. <laughs> uh, so it is vitally important to our economy and our jobs that we um, protect Lake Erie. And I uh, actually don't disagree with my opponent that um, you know, fully funding H2 Ohio and fully funding initiatives to help uh, protect Lake Erie at a state level is a good idea and we should continue to do that. All right, thank you for that answer. And I want to mention again that this is the 89th House District debate, the first of five debates here at the Sandusky Register. Safe distance, mask wearing, um, no crowds, no audience. So it's a little bit different this year. and We appreciate your patience and understanding. This debate and all of our debates are brought to you by BGSU Firelands College as a public service, and we want to thank BGSU Firelands College and encourage you to investigate an education there which you can achieve at a very economic, uh, very competitive tuition prices. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to the next question, and that would come from reporter Tom Jackson. Uh, candidates, what motivates you to seek this office, and what will be your top priorities that you'll focus on if you are elected? And hey, we'll start with you, uh, DJ Swerdin. Thanks, Matt. I'm going to harken back to last year when I decided to put my application materials to fill Representative Art's vacancy. For me at the time, it was workforce, and I was serving on the Firelands Forward Initiative which is an initiative to get our constituents and citizens the skills they need to have a good job with a good wage so they can live the American dream of owning a home and raising a family. And I'm very passionate about workforce issue because to me, that's jobs, that's wages, that's a good life. Uh, since getting to the legislature, I've realized we need to go deeper. And it starts with our education system in the state of Ohio. We need to start incentivizing schools to have their students become career ready at an earlier age. And I've introduced legislation to introduce the skilled trades to uh, junior high students and career tech options. And those are the jobs that are available right now. That's work that I'm willing to do and happy to do, and we're going to keep doing it. Very good. Thank you, Representative Swearingen. And candidate Alexis Miller, what motivates you to seek this office, and what will be your top priorities if elected? Um, you know, growing up here, one of the values that was instilled in me a really long time ago uh, was public service and giving back to your community. Um, and that's what motivates me to run for this office. Um, 
you know, the voters I was able to meet pre-coronavirus, you know, when I was out knocking doors, um, and the voters I continue to meet and the people of our community aren't just nameless faces. This is kids' parents I went to high school with. This is my family. Um, and I care very much about what happens to our community into the future. Um, one of my top priorities, I think, would be investing in working people. And what I mean by that is cracking down on worker misclassification and um, allowing kids, um, I, you know, skilled trades are at an in-demand field right now. I mean, uh, if you're a good welder, you can get a job right now. Um, but I think uh, some of the priorities are a little bit skewed um, and we need to bring back uh, good public education and accessible health care. I guess I'm done. You got the first <laughs> bell. Congratulations. Thank you, Brandon. He's the timekeeper. Mentioning that, we're going to go to a rapid fire portion where answers are going to be 30 seconds or fewer. And if you want to rebut your opponent, you have 15 seconds to do that. And the next question, I think, goes to Brandon Adio. What are the most important road and transportation needs in the 89th district, and what will you do as a legislator to address these needs? And we're going to direct that first question to you, candidate Alexis Miller. Um, well, we did just tr pass a transportation budget, which allocated more money um, to fix our roads and bridges in the state of Ohio. So I, I do think that that's a good thing. Um, Improving waterway transportation would also be, I think, really crucial in bringing more people here and encouraging more people to visit um, Erie and Ottawa County. Can I address infrastructure? Sure. Uh, broadband needs to be part of our infrastructure um, question and addressing it. And by broadband, broadband you, mean, internet. you mean internet services? Yes. Very good. And we'll go to you, Representative Swearingen. I stand by my record of saying that we need better connection to Central Ohio, not as not only for our tourism industry, but also for our manufacturing industry, because we want to try to bring those jobs back to our area. Those entities, those companies, they look and they say, what's the tax structure like? What's the regulatory structure like? And are there good roads to transport our, our goods out of the place we're making uh, the, those goods? And that's where good access to Central Ohio Eastern, Western Ohio comes into play. I support that. Broadband, we did a residential broadband bill this year, and I supported it. Very good. Thank you for that answer. Thank you, candidates. And we'll move on to the next question, which I think goes to reporter Tom Jackson. Should lawmakers change election law to make it easier to vote? What changes, if any, do you support? And we'll start the answers with you, Representative Swearingen. I, as a ele former elections official myself, I've seen elections firsthand on elections night. We have one of the premier elections in the nation, in Ohio. You can vote early for almost a month, you can vote absentee without having to give a reason for it, and you can vote in person on election day. Senator Gavarone has a good bill that I think has merit in the sense that you can securely apply for an absentee ballot online. I think that's something we can consider. We've seen success with that in other states, and I'd like to see where that goes in the legislature. All right, thank you for that answer, sir. Candidate Miller. Um, I agree that online requests for absentee ballots uh, would make it a lot more accessible for more people to be able to request their ballot and to vote. Um, I think that, that's one of the, the major things. It would be really easy. It would be an easy change, and um, it would allow more people the access to the ballot that they deserve. Very good. Thank you for that answer. And our next question. I love this question. Brandon. Uh, it's candidate Miller. Who is your favorite <laughs> Republican and why? And Representative Swearingen, who's your favorite Democrat and why? And please explain. And we'll start with you, candidate Miller. Does it have to be an elected one? Or no. What? <laughs> <laughs> it, could be, it could be anyone. And from history, from present, from future. Oh, Lord. Well, maybe future would be difficult. Mr. Swearingen, do you want to try and take a stab sure. at that? Uh, my favorite Democrat would be my grandpa. He was uh, worked in the steel mills in Eastern Ohio. He raised seven kids with my grandma. You know, they lived the American dream. House, kids, and uh, had a great job working for Wheeling Steel. And uh, he was a union Democrat. I love him to death. 
And is he still alive? He's, no, he's not alive. And, and what was his name? Uh, Ed. Ed. Yeah. Ed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that answer. And now we give a second chance to you, Candidate Miller. Who is your favorite Republican? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever thought deeply about, um, you know, party ID when I <laughs> think about who I like, but um, I guess my parents are probably my favorite Republican. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <sure. laughs> We're breaking news here today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for that answer. I do appreciate it. We're going to move on to our next question. Uh, which sort of has a little bit to do with this. Uh, and that question will come from Tom Jackson. Partisan politics has become more cantankerous in recent <laughs> years to the point of being very off-putting for many, although we thank both of the candidates today for not interrupting each other. <laughs> yes. why, why is that, in your view, that politics has, has become more cantankerous? And what, if anything, can be done to mitigate these animosities. We're going to start with you. Um, in my experience, politics has become more partisan due to gerrymandering um, in the state house and in Congress. When li lines are drawn to protect uh, one incumbent party over another, it just pushes those incumbents to be more and more extreme to win a primary. So addressing the way we draw our lines would be game changing in um, helping to not be so uh, cantankerous, as you call it. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for that answer. And Representative Swearingen. Two things. 24-7 uh, news cycles with big corporate cable news has not helped at all. The second thing, social media and constant consumption of social media. I don't think anyone has ever changed their neighbor's mind on a Facebook argument. So I think taking a step back as a state, I have I, I, <laughs> <laughs> taking a step back as a state, having a conversation with someone who disagrees with you on policy over a cup of coffee that goes a long way. Very good, thank you for that answer. We're going to move on to the next question, and it comes from reporter Brandon Adio. On a scale of one to ten, with one representing failure and ten representing success, how do you rank Ohio Governor Mike DeWine's performance in response to the pandemic? And we'll go with you, Representative Swearingen. Early on, I give Governor DeWine a 10. We didn't know what this virus was. China wasn't giving us any information on this virus whatsoever. We were flying blind as a state when it came to COVID. You know, Governor DeWine took decisive steps early on. He canceled the Arnold Fitness Expo, which I think was a big thing for our state. And, you know, early on we took a strategic retreat, stepped back for two weeks, and reevaluated our options, and I would give Governor DeWine a 10 early on. And now? I've disagreed with the governor on policies. I think at this point we're to, we're to the point where the crisis needs to be considered. How do we go long term? Let's do that in the legislature. Let's do that with doctors and experts and have a long term plan in place of how we get beyond COVID. So presently, you would give him a... Could be better. Could be better. Very good. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. And candidate Miller, same question. Um, I don't, I mean, the number of things kind of arbitrary, but a five. Um, I think that initially, yes, uh, the governor did respond really well, but the legislature spent four months arguing with the governor and not actually making any plans to make coronavirus better or to come up with any sort of long-term economic recovery plan. Uh, so I am not sure that it is entirely his fault that uh, there is no, there's no plan for Ohio. Um, well, you give him a steady five? The governor? Yes. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Swearingen. I, I think this is the first rebuttal. Of the debate. It is, it is. And we're, I'm disappointed by that, but please go ahead. <laughs> so, I'm glad we don't have any interruptions, as Tom mentioned, but please we, go ahead. We do have... Swing for the fences, go no, ahead. We, we do have several bills that are about to be signed into law. Mm -hmm. One of them, which actually was signed into law last week, to overhaul our unemployment system, which we found very broken during COVID. And two, I have a bill that's going to be signed into law next week, to support our services industry with our bars and restaurants. So we do have policy there. And I've also talked to Treasurer Sprague, who's, uh, who has the idea of setting up a fund, 
we're using the CARES Act dollars that we still have on hand to target those businesses, workers, employees who were hardest hit from COVID, whether that's a salon, a bar and restaurant, or a gym. And I think that's an idea that has merit going forward. Thank you for that answer. I think our timekeeper uh, might have. Did you have any response? Do I rebut to a rebut? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And we're going to move on to the. Why don't you use 60 seconds for this last one? What's that? 60 seconds for this last one. Okay, this, this question now. Okay, we're going to go 60 seconds on this question by request of reporter Brandon Adio. All, All right, Tom right. Jackson. All right, under the same scale, one to 10, uh, please rank President Donald Trump's performance in response to the pandemic. And we'll start with you, Representative Swearingen. I would echo my opponent's uh, comments earlier about the scale being arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you know. Very good. I, I came here really to talk about issues that impact the 89th House District. Uh, that's what I was prepared to do. You know, when you're a state legislature, you stay focused on your district the people you serve, and you really try to stay out of federal politics as best you can. I think President Trump took some decisive action early on when it came to traveling, and he told the states, look, you're better equipped as a state to deal with this than a large federal effort could be, and uh, that's the policy that he put in place, and as a result, we, we took that and ran with it. So, so on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, I think he's done okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, candidate Alexis Miller, using the same scale, 1 to 10, how do you rank President Donald Trump's performance in response to the pandemic? Um, I mean, there's 200,000 people who have died as a result of the inaction of the federal government, so I would say not real great, uh, like a 3. A 3. All right. Uh, and let me just ask you this. This question isn't in our, our uh, prepared questions, but... If Donald Trump wanted to bring an indoor rally, campaign rally, to Sandusky High School later this week, would you support it? <laughs> I wouldn't support any indoor huge rally, uh, regardless of who it is, even if it was Joe Biden who wanted to do it. Um, okay, and Representative Swearingen, would you support Donald Trump bringing an indoor rally to Sandusky High School? I would leave that decision to the local elected officials and uh, consultation with the health experts. Okay, and we'll move on to the next question. No, that's the last question. Very good, and so we'll go to closing statements, and we'll start with you, uh, candidate Alexis Miller. 90 seconds. 90 seconds oh, for boy. a closing statement. Um, Up to. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing this opportunity for us to speak to the public. We don't often, during coronavirus, get those opportunities, uh, so I really appreciate it. Um, I, I think I'd just like to underscore how I'm running for office not, to, not for myself, certainly, and not to enrich my own um, life, but to give back to our community and make sure that this is a great place, the same great place that I grew up um, into the future. So I um, would encourage everybody to check out my website. If, um, can I say that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because it has all my contact info. So if you want to call, text, email, um, it's all on my website, and I welcome any questions from the public. And the website uh, address is? AlexisMillerOhio.com. Very good. Thank you very much for participating in this debate. Representative Swearingen. Thanks, Matt, and again, thank you to BGSU Firelands for hosting this debate, the Sandusky Register for having, uh, having us here. Like Ms. Miller said, it's a unique opportunity during this time to speak to the public. And what I want to focus on in the next General Assembly is good paying jobs. You know, there's an opportunity here, we learned during COVID, that we can reshore a lot of our jobs back to the United States, and I want them here in Erie and Ottawa County. We can start making our drugs here again, we can start making any protective equipment that we need here again, and those are good paying jobs. Second, I do want to go back to the legislature and introduce substantive education reform. And what I mean by that is getting the testing out of the way, letting the teachers teach and the students learn, and preparing those students for the jobs of the future in conjunction with our labor community, our business community, so that they're able to get the skills they need that have good paying jobs that will sustain them over their careers. And that's what I want to work towards next General Assembly. And I hope for the viewers' votes at home.
Thank you, Representative Swearingen. Thank you, candidates, for participating in this, the first of five debates at SanduskyRegister.com. We have another debate this afternoon, and that is the Huron County Commissioner's Race. And we'll be back this afternoon. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you to BGSU Firelands College for sponsoring this debate.